Today I'm going to make the chemical potassium dichromate from elemental chromium. This video was actually a request from my patron, the next guy, and I think it turned out pretty well. Now to get started, the first thing I needed to do was to dissolve some chromium metal in hydrochloric acid. Now I happen to have pure chromium metal, but most people don't. However, it's pretty accessible and there's a few ways to get it. The first thing that comes to mind would be like dissolving down some silverware in hydrochloric acid and then selectively precipitating the chromium, which I might do in a future video. In any case, chromium metal dissolves extremely readily in hydrochloric acid into the very dark green hydrated chromium-3 chloride. Interestingly enough, you can see a bit of blue at the bottom left of the beaker as the chromium dissolves, and that's a bit of chromium-2 chloride that exists only very briefly. Once all the chromium had dissolved, I went ahead and passed the solution through a coffee filter to make sure there was no tiny undissolved pieces, and then I transferred the filtered chromium chloride solution to a beaker. The next step was to neutralize the chromium chloride with sodium hydroxide to precipitate chromium hydroxide, which is completely insoluble and can be filtered off. Now it is important here not to exceed a pH of around 8.5 as chromium is amphoteric and will redissolve in excess hydroxide. And come to think of it, this means it might make a good candidate for an alkaline electrolysis to isolate pure chromium. I'll be sure to give that a try at some point and let you guys know how it works. Anyway, once all the chromium hydroxide had precipitated, I went ahead and filtered off as much water as I could and transferred the wet, gooey globs of chromium hydroxide to a new beaker. As a side note, chromium hydroxide doesn't really filter or dry easily at all, it's kind of a nightmare to work with. And chromium chloride, in its hydrated green state, is nearly virtually impossible to crystallize in my own personal experience. That said, it's likely better if the chromium hydroxide is dry at this state, but given how hard it is to dry, I just don't even bother. In any case, my next step was to add about 100 milliliters of a 10% sodium hypochlorite bleach solution and give it a good stir. Sodium hypochlorite is an extremely strong oxidizer for how weirdly readily available it is, and it will easily oxidize the chromium hydroxide to sodium dichromate and sodium chromate. And now I'm going to go ahead and stop talking for a moment so that you can watch the dichromate form. I gently heated this mixture and gave it the occasional stir to help it along, but even after leaving it overnight and adding a decent excess of bleach, there was a bit of sediment at the bottom that refused to oxidize. I eventually gave up and went ahead and passed the solution through a filter again to remove this and leave a perfectly clear solution of dark orange dichromate. Now, it's probably a good time to mention that despite the beautiful color of this chemical, it's an extremely toxic mutagenic carcinogen. This chemical is one of the few times I've seen a 4 in the blue box of a hazard diamond, and it should not be handled by anyone without proper training and safety equipment. In addition, every single thing that comes in contact with hexavalent chromium should be thoroughly bathed in sulfites to reduce the chromates to the relatively safe chromium-3 state. This is not only done for safety, but also because this stuff is such a potent environmental toxin that most municipal water is routinely tested for hexavalent chromium, and if you put it down the drain, you will probably be caught and severely fined. It sure is pretty though. Anyway, to make this crude mixture of sodium chromate and dichromate into pure potassium dichromate, I first boiled it down to about half of this volume before adding a very small amount of sulfuric acid. This is done to bring the pH to around 1, which will favor the formation of dichromate rather than chromate. I then added some potassium chloride, and once it had thoroughly mixed for a while, I left it overnight to allow the potassium dichromate crystals to form. Potassium dichromate can be selectively precipitated from solution here because as of right now, 
The ions floating around in solution include sodium and chloride from the bleach, uh, potassium and chloride from the potassium chloride, a bit of sulfate and dichromate. And of the salts that that can form, potassium dichromate has by far the lowest solubility. And sure enough, when I came back the next day, I saw some nice potassium dichromate crystals had formed in the bottom of my beaker, and I went ahead and cooled it down a bit more with an ice bath before passing it all through vacuum filtration. This was done to collect my product, and it left me with a pretty decent amount of fairly pure potassium dichromate, which I could have then dried under vacuum desiccation for storage. However, I don't really need any more dichromate, I've got about 5 pounds of it, and since this stuff scares me more than the vast majority of chemicals, I decided to neutralize the filtrate as well as anything that touched the stuff with a whole lot of sodium hydrosulfite. Now a bit about this chemical itself. All hexavalent chromium compounds are decently strong oxidizers and frequently used in organic synthesis as a milder alternative to permanganate. For example, um, I've used dichromate to oxidize primary alcohols to aldehydes or secondary alcohols to ketones, while permanganate typically only produces carboxylic acids. Dichromate can also be used to qualitatively test for reducing agents or alcohols by turning to the green trivalent state in their presence. Chromate and dichromate behave nearly identically in solution, and the main reason potassium dichromate is so strongly preferred in most chemistry labs is that unlike sodium chromate or dichromate, it's not hygroscopic. Now, potassium chromate isn't either, but it has an enormously higher solubility in water, which makes it tough to crystallize. However, if you want, you can easily convert potassium dichromate to other hexavalent chromium compounds fairly easily. For example here, if I wanted to convert this potassium dichromate to chromate, all I need to do is add a bit of potassium hydroxide until the solution goes from orange to yellow. This yellow color means that all the dichromate has been converted to chromate, which I could then crystallize out. Now, one thing I find interesting about chromium is that it not only shares bonding behavior with the other elements of group 6, but also with the elements of group 16. And I'm not going to get into why that is in this video, but the point is they can all form inorganic acids with oxygen. This means that they all also have acid and hydride trioxide forms. And on that note, you can convert potassium dichromate to its acid, as well as its acid and hydride. To do this, all you need to do is dissolve the potassium dichromate in a minimal amount of water and then add an equal portion of 98% sulfuric acid. This forms the horrifying chemical chromic acid, which is a blood red color and used extensively in chrome plating, much to the misfortune of the chrome plating workers. If you leave this sitting around long enough, eventually an extremely dark red and almost black solid will precipitate out. And that is chromium trioxide. Anyway, that's about all I've got on chromium for today. Um, here are a couple of the colors that I got out of the chromium during this project. And as a side note, chromium is actually named after the Greek word for color, due to how extremely vivid chromium compounds like these are. And as always, I hope you found this interesting, and big shout out to my patrons whose incredibly generous contributions are vital in supporting this work. As I mentioned at the beginning, this video was a patron request, and uh, to all current and future patrons, you can ask me to do whatever you'd like to see done, and if it's legal, I'll do it. And to everybody else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, um, technically Instagram, but I don't really keep it up that well. Maybe I will in the future, who knows? Or um, even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.